Hey everybody, this is the dude, Darren Yoho, again, for another Commander Decklist video! Today we got Mimeoplasm, this monstrosity Tyrannosaurus Rex armed. Uh, this thing looks kind of like a bird beak looking thing with a, a little claw hand thing, and I don't know what's going on, but he's an ooze. He oozes. Uh, super awesome, fun general, and a very good uh, color scheme. A lot, a lot of options. There's, I did so much tweaking and tweaking and tweaking to this deck list that, I mean, it's a lot of play preference for me, and I imagine it's probably a lot of play preference for other people. I mean, there's just, there's so many options that there's no right, no wrong way. My route I went with it was trying to get them out quick. I wanted to have a lot of options, a lot of targets. And I wanted him to be hard to deal with, so it was kind of a hard. It was kind of hard to get a good balance of all these. Now, my my list it's it's a little it's a little wonky, but trust me, like it runs smooth, it runs fast. I have options, and he's hard to deal with. I'm I'm never at a loss for an option, and I always have targets, and it's it's been very good. I I played a game last night that there's just. He kept coming. Mimeoplasm kept coming. Like, and that's what I like to see. I like to see that resiliency. That means it's consistent. It's resilient. It's it's not easily just taken out. So, let's get into the lands. So, zoom around here a little bit. There we go. So we got the, a very low land count. I only have five basic lands. I have three forests because a lot of my engine stuff to get this process rolling requires forest. Once I get that forest and once I get the second land, I'm usually good to go. I usually have something to just start assembling pieces. One swamp, one island. I got a lot of other uh, blue-black land, so I was able to skimp on that. Mortuary Mire is like a reanimation spell on a land almost. I don't quite have Volrath Stronghold, Hey, if any of you guys want to send me one of those, I would definitely replace it. I won't say no if you want to give me one. But, Mortuary Mire is a uh, very powerful card. It came out of Battle for Zendikar. Shizo, why not make, when you're making Mimi Plasm big, why not make him hard to block? Urborg, fun fact, I don't run Cabal Coffers. Why, you ask, that's crazy you ask, is because I really don't have a need for it. I mean, like I said, it's play preference, but I really don't need a metric shit ton of black mana. I don't need it. He helps me smooth out my mana base by making all my forests and other lands swamps. But I don't need a ton of black lands. You have me a coast. Golgari Rock Farm. Reflecting Pier. Demir Aqueduct. Polluted Delta. Also, I, I run that in uh, Flooded Strand as far as fetch lands. I'm not real big on fetch lands in Commander, although I have been adding some in more recent decks. But again, I want to make sure I hit my right colors when I need them. So it's not so bad. Wooded Cemetery, or Woodland Cemetery. River of Theaters, Gypsy. Underground River. Simic Growth Chamber. Overgrown Tomb. Flooded Strand. It's the other fetchy. Creeping Tar Pit. I like Creeping Tar Pit. It adds for blue-black, so I put it in here. Other than that, this card really doesn't have any other purpose, so... Breeding Pool. <laughs> Mana Confluence. I don't run City of Brass. Another thing I had to watch with this, I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a weird list, but I had to be careful that I didn't have a lot of lands dealing a ton of damage to me, because I don't have a lot of life gain sources. Hinterland Harbor, Command Tower, Drowned Catacomb, Sunken Ruins, little filter land action, Lanoir Wastes, Watery Grave, the grave is wet, Tech Edge, now we're getting into our colorless lands. Tech Edge, and I also run Strip Mine, I have those in here just because of the new land that, uh, was it, Arcane Lighthouse. It removes Shroud or Hexproof from your opponent's creatures. 
that can just rattlesnake me all day long and I have to make sure I get rid of it. Another thing, Maze of Ith uh, and uh, Mystifying Maze, those things, I mean 90% of the time Mimeoplasm's got hexproof or shroud. So the big thing I have to watch out for, which can really just wreck my day, is the Arcane Lighthouse. But in the instance that he doesn't have hexproof or shroud, I want to make sure he's going through and not getting Maze of Ith all day long. Strip mine. Rogue's Passage. This is a legit kill card in this deck. You know, when Mimeoplasm is like a 13 13 or more, I think I had him up to like a 17 17 or something, something like that at one point, you want to make sure that damage goes straight to the face. This is a land that will kill people. And I'm also very fond of it in Commander, period. But, that, you know, that's just me. So. Homeward Path. The second worst thing to Maze If and Arcane Lighthouse would be if somebody stole my Mimeoplasm. You steal my Mimi and we're gonna have problems. Mirror in the Moaning Well. People are gonna board wipe. After they see Mimeoplasm, he's a 13-13, that's a two turn clock. They're gonna wipe the board. Why not gain 10, 12, 15 life? Hall of the Bandit Lord. Yes, the three life is kind of steep after you do it you know, two or three times, but this means turn five at the latest, I'm swinging with a, a big Mimeoplasm. And he's coming out fast, hot, heavy. The Mimi's all warmed up, and the Mimi has haste. Oops. Can't grab stuff today. Temple of the False God. And Ancient Tomb. Speeds that up. Make sure I get that uh, turn four Mimeoplasm hot and heavy ready to order all right so now we're getting into my creature base let me grab it up here uh, thing to note is i run 37 lands which is kind of low for me on the uh, spectrum of my play style i usually like to hit that nice 38 number but you know this one i was able to go a little lower because uh, i have a cheaper casting cost in general so Seder Wayfinder. I have a lot of cards, a lot of creatures that, you know, give me options and situations. And with the Mimeoplasm, if it's in my hand, it's an option. If it's in the graveyard, it's an option. No matter where it is, it's still an option. Seder Wayfinder is a turn two, puts things in the graveyard, puts something in my hand. It digs, it gets me something I need, you know, I need lands, and puts everything else in the graveyard. So he is definite... Uh, an engine starter. Fauna Shaman, it's a tutor that dumps a creature. I, I run the two dredge creatures, Stinkweed Imp and Golgari Grave Troll. Toss that into the graveyard, fetch something you need. Tri Builder, I run a very lower amount of mana rocks than I normally run because I want a lot of my uh, cards in this deck, I want a, a large percentage to be creatures to hit other things with. So Tri Builder is basically just a rampant growth that I can Mimeoplasm, which I did last night, funny story. <laughs> Stinkweed Imp, Dredge Mechanic, also a good nuclear deterrent with that little uh, death touch going on there. Splinter Fright. Splinter Fright is an engine card because turn three I can play it and he starts milling me two turn. Two cards in my graveyard, every upkeep. Also late game, because of his uh, static star star power, I can, you know, exile him onto the Mimeoplasm and put an additional, like, ten or more counters on Mimeoplasm. That is a tremendous, tremendous bump. So he is good, very good early game, very good late game. I mean, you just can't go wrong. Eternal Witness. Nyx Weaver. This is basically a second Eternal Witness for me, except it does one step more for me in this situation. It also gets that engine going and puts things into my graveyard. So I can't really ask for more. <laughs> Phyrexia Metamorph, uh, I have that and Clever Impersonator in this list. They are essentially the glue that binds this deck together. Clones can fit any role, especially one that copies permanents or one that copies artifacts. I mean, I can, I can make Mimeoplasm become a copy of Clever Impersonator and be a Planeswalker. How cool is that? With 1-1 counters equal to the other creature's exiled power. 
Brawn. Now, as far as incarnations, I only decided to run Brawn after several, several, several iterations and tweaking and, and playtesting you know, sessions. Brawn is the only one that really worked for me because it's so easy for me to make Mimeoplasm big as far as just being a high power, high toughness creature. Now, if I ran Wonder, which is the other you know crowd favorite, he can be chump blocked all day long in the air, and that's what I was running into. I had like a 1313 Mimeoplasm, or you know 1717 in you know one or two instances, but he wasn't connecting because they happened to have a 33, a 44, a 55 flyer whenever I needed it. Now I know flying's a little, it's it's not quite as common as just a regular creature without any evasion, but. Brawn in this situation does more work than Wonder. Sidisi. Sidisi is a newer addition, newer tweaking uh, card that I, I slid in there. It's a pivotal card. It, it works when Mimeoplasm isn't up and running. So I can put her out and just focus on, you know, me getting stuff in the graveyard, maybe attacking, put out some 2 2 zombies, and get a board presence going. It's a very pivotal creature. And it's also not necessary, so you don't have to worry about people killing her. Dreamborn Muse, almost the same thing. This gets that engine going, and it also helps put cards in your opponent's graveyards to make more targets for Mimeoplasm. <laughs> Commander is a format with big, fat, heavy, expensive-ass stuff. So everybody else is running just as big stuff. Solemn, again, it's something that fetches me a land, gets me a little card advantage, and it's a creature. Haven Gall Lich, it's reanimation on a stick. Uh, I've I've used this without casting a creature to uh, target Avatar Woe in one of my opponent's graveyards just so I can tap it to kill something. It's a very versatile creature, especially when you're running a, a creature heavy deck. Acidic Slime, pretty pretty standard issue slime action. It is also an ooze. Golgari Grave Troll, all star player in this. He is a powerhouse once he gets going. Even when I get Brawn in the graveyard, he will kill people by himself. I get him out with uh, Rogue's Passage or Shizzo, he will kill people. Like, it's it's a guaranteed thing that's going to happen. Phyrexian Delver, he is a tutorable with Fauna Shaman, reanimation on a on a creature. I'll be, you got to pay a chunk of life, but a commander, you start with 40, so it's often negligible. Consuming Aberration. He is a giant creature almost at all times. Late game, he means Mimeoplasm's like a 20-20, at the very least. I mean, it's it's just going to happen. He's going to get big, even if you play him and his activated ability gets triggered, or, you know, it's just late game and you toss him. I mean, one way or another, there's there's always going to be cards with the graveyard. So, he is a powerhouse. Let's get the Ricks. Now, I didn't want to have to be that guy and, you know, do a douchey Mimeoplasm build, and in, in my first iteration, I had like three infect creatures with evasion, like Blighted Agent, Skitherix, and I think one other one. But I ended up taking the other two out because they were often you know, dead weights, one ones or two twos. Skitherix was the only one that stayed because I can I can out of nowhere Randy Orton somebody and just RKO, TKO, whatever the heck he does, and you're just out of nowhere, boom, there's ten infect. Body double. This is a clone that works the best with this deck. It is just the shit. Duplicant. Duplicant is a powerful creature that, I mean, with brawn, I can make Mimeo become a duplicant and then add another, you know, five 1 1 counters on him with the other creature and get trample. So he can be giant with duplicant. Worm coil. I mean, it's pretty standard stock. It's a big creature, so. I get six one one counters with Mimeoplasm, make him become you know that or or what? It's just a little bit of options. Sagu Mauler. This is one of the few new cards out of the newer sets that actually really fit this build <laughs> because it's a six six trample hexproof. So it's got evasion. It's got hexproof. It's hard to deal with. Mimeoplasm is excellent becoming this creature. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, he's got evasion. He's got hexproof, and he's probably going to be at least a 10-10 to a 13, 14, 15, you know, whatever. He's going to be huge. Consecrated Sphinx. Got to be careful running this and put it in your graveyard, because you know, even though you want Mimeoplasm to become him, other people will steal him. So you got to be careful and you got to be prepared. That's why I run Homeward Path. Running a lot of cards in the graveyard, people are going to steal him. So Homeward Path is a very 
Excellent fail save for those accidental blowouts. <laughs> Plated Crusher, another. It's an uncommon trample hex proof. It's a 7 6. Memeoplasm copies him, becomes a 7 6. Will exile Consecrate Sphinx for a 4 1 1 counter. So he's an 11 uh, 10 trample hex proof. That's amazing. Con Sphinx, or not Con Sphinx, uh, Sphinx of Uthun. Sphinx study, Sphinx, Sphinx, Sphinx. Uh, this Sphinx is actually a very good choice for this because it's a big creature, it's a flyer. And whether the cards go to your hand or they go to the graveyard, either way, you win. So there is no losing with this. I mean, what are they going to do? Throw stuff in the graveyard? Oh no. Well, I'll just reanimate it, steal it, clone it, copy it, amyoplasm it. I mean, put it, in, put it in my hand, it'd probably be the worst thing, and even then I could still cast it. Tornado Elemental. He gets rid of some of those pesky flyers, and his secondary ability is the key thing. Mimeoplasm becomes him. That means the Mimeoplasm damage is connecting whether you block or not. That's pretty hardcore. Simic Sky Swallower. Again, Flying Trample, Shroud, 6-6. Six, six. Mimeoplasm Material. Crows and Tusker. This is an old school card that came out around the time that I started playing Magic. Uh, I started playing around Odyssey to Nemesis, that era, and... Torment was big and Onslaught was coming out. Onslaught was the the new big kid on the block. Kroos and Tusker was amazing. <laughs> you cycle it for three mana, you fetch yourself a land and draw a card. Now the reason why I have this in here, now it was weird because I, I was looking for ways to add in more creatures for you know Splinter Fright and all those things, more Mimeoplasm targets that were big, and ways that I can fetch out my lands without adding mana rocks or, you know, stuff like Rampant Growth, <laughs> and, and more draw, and this basically fits all those bills. This gives me six 1-1 one -one counters because I don't need him to become, I don't need Mimeoplasm to become him, I need Mimeoplasm to be him, and get his six 1-1 one -one counters, and I can cycle him early on, get me a card by drawing, get me a land, and, I mean, a lot of times I use him to trigger my dredge just to dig some extra cards out. I mean, he's got a lot of various uses that, surprisingly, I wouldn't want to take him out for anything. Like, he is, he's just, he's so useful. He's such a pivotal card. Siege Behemoth. Hexproof, and his shit is going through. Also, 7 power. That right there is a, a three-turn three clock with uh, 7 power. You know, all you need is 21 commander damage, not counting given... I don't know, six extra 1-1 one -one counters, that's a two-turn clock, whether you block it or not. Sepulchral Primordial, giving me options. Stealing stuff and a little bit of hard-to-block body. So he is pretty awesome. Deluvian Primordial, I have fought so hard to, to keep this thing in because, you know, there's just so many other options that I can put in this deck versus him. I mean, a lot of times I'll play him and I, I whiff, like... People just don't have good instants or sorceries in their graveyard that I can play. But last night I played a game and I was just, I was on the ass end of an ass kicking. And I had nothing to do, but I was searching through opponent's graveyard. Somebody had a board wipe in their graveyard and that just saved my ass. Like, I was able to mimeoplasm him, cast the board wipe, wipe the board, and that gave me enough time to reset restabilize and get going again and, and I ended up winning that game because of that play so after all that fighting and just wanting to take him out because of all the the failures he has earned his place Shouldra the Whispering One he kills things and reanimates Runescar Demon Tutor on a very big body Inkwell Leviathan this is like one of your best Mimeoplasm targets Island Walk Trample Shroud. He's a 7-11. He's pretty badass. <laughs> Woodfall Primus. A little bit of removal on a stick, and he's kind of hard to deal with. So if Mimeoplasm becomes him, he will persist, come back into play, and re-trigger copying something else. Gingitaxis Core Augur. Just a little bit of a fun commander hate. Okay, now we're going to get into my other stuff. So 37 lands, 37 creatures. 
So we got your your one, your only soul ring. Rampant growth. Now it's kind of an oddball card in here because I have five mana acceleration pieces as far as, you know, soul ring, mana rocks, and this go. I chose this because sometimes and more often than not, I need to make sure I hit my, my land sources. Those are super important and, and rampant growth makes sure I hit that early on so I can stay on key with uh, getting Mimeoplasm out quick. <laughs> Golgari Signet, Demir Signet, and Simic Signet. These help you mana fix and I, it's imperative that I hit my colors when I need them. So these are super important pieces. Demonic Tutor, now we're getting into my, my engine. This is what I call the engine. This gets shit going. This is the key to turn on the monster truck to fucking run stuff over. All right, that's basically what Mimeoplasm is. Mimeoplasm is a monster truck. He's Grave Digger, okay? Demonic Tutor, tutor for whatever you need. I often try to save that to late game to get me my silver bullet. Life from the Loam, you get this going, you're probably going to win. I mean, it dredges and it gets you your lands. Grizzly Salvage, another card that Oftentimes, whenever I start with this in my opening hand and get it out turn two, um, I'm in pretty good shape. <laughs> Compulsion. This is one of my favorite cards from the Tormod, or yeah, Tormod, Torment block. You two mana to cast it, two mana to activate it, discard a card to draw a card. This works amazingly with the dredge creatures because the pay two and discard is part of the cost, or the uh, the activation. And then the effect is the draw card. So you can discard uh, Stinkweed Imp, draw a card, replace that with a dredge, get Stinkweed Imp back, and, and just keep doing that. And that's oftentimes what I do. Buried Alive, put whatever you need in the graveyard. Usually I'll put, uh, for example, Inkwell Leviathan, uh, a secondary fat creature like Kuros and Tusker, just something that's dead weight, and a dredge creature. That's all you need. Thirst for Knowledge. This is a weird piece, but it actually works very well, surprisingly. The draw three is great for three mana, it's instant speed, and then I discard two. I don't, I rarely ever discard an artifact, I always want to discard two. That puts two creatures into my graveyard, which is all Mimeoplasm needs, it's two creatures. Forbidden Alchemy, amazing card, I've yet to flash it back, but the option's there. It's instant speed, you know, look at the top four, Pick out what you need. Whispering Madness. It's a madhouse. And this I love. Because this allows me to... I, I always get at least two uses. Usually two to four uses out of this card. And it just dumps a bunch of good juice into my opponent's graveyards that I can use with Mimeoplasm. Beast Within. Now we're getting into my uh, removal. I have uh, a little bit of limited uh, removal. Lately, my decks have been a little removal light. Beast Within hits a permanent. The token's negligible. <laughs> Cyclonic Rift. If you're running blue, you need to run this, period. Damnation. Uh, I do run four board wipes, essentially, <clears throat> because little aggressive creature token decks, those kind of decks really give me problems because they can put out more bodies and... I mean, chances are I'm going to have, you know, Trample on my, my Mimeoplasm, but in the case I don't, I need to make sure I'm not chump blocked all day long. And I mean, I can get ate up really fast if if I have a little bit of a sluggish draw or they manage to take care of Mimeoplasm before I get to connect and kill people with them. I need to make sure, you know, I have the ability to survive. So getting rid of those creature decks, creature token decks is important. Life's Finale. It kills all creatures and searches for three next Mimeoplasm targets. That's pretty baller. Straight Baller. Decree of Pain. Kills things, draws cards. <laughs> now we're getting into my reanimation. This I will swear by up and down to anybody. I will argue anybody. Tortured Existence is such a sweet card. This thing, if, if you don't take care of this and get rid of it, it's gonna win me the game. I mean, this is like that Prophet of Crufix. Like, if you don't get rid of this, I'm gonna win because I'm gonna toss my dredge creatures and return my shouldred. I'm gonna toss my other dredge creatures after I dredge it back to my hand 
for duplicate or whatever I need. I'll this gives me whatever I need at the time. This has to go. If you see this hit play, this has to go. This is an amazing, powerful card, and it's like a 30 or 40 or 50 cent card. It's freaking amazing for one mana. Animate Dead, pretty standard. Necromancy, also pretty standard. Whip of Erebos. This is uh, one of the few ways I have to recoup life, so this is a very important card for me, and I try not to toss it if I, if I don't have to. It also allows me to temporarily reanimate creatures. Say I want a, another Rune Scar Demon Trigger, it gets me that trigger. And lastly, we have the dual pairing of Lightning Greaves and Swifty Bees. Got them boots, bruh. All right. So, please, let me know what you think. I'm currently working on uh, finishing up. I, I finished up Mimeoplasm. I'm finishing on uh, tweaking up the, uh, shoot, the Omnath, Locus of Rage. More like Locus of Murder. But uh, tweaking that to make sure it's running like a finely tuned machine. And, by God, that deck is so much fun. So, I'll be, sh I'll be sure to tweak that over the next couple weeks and um, get that up here also. But, again, let me know what you think, any comments, concerns, likes, let me know. I mean, if you want to see something, maybe I can whip up a, a deck if you guys want to see something and put it up here for a video. So, let me know. Alright, see you guys later. Bye.